First guy to dream this up, Alexander Hamilton. First guy to put a name on American system, Henry Clay. Everybody likes this stuff. This is how you make money, legally and illegally. It's the bottom line that's hard, specifically competitive religious landscape, meaning religions compete for believers. Americans switch their religion more frequently than any other country in the world. That is the future. Why? Circumstances change. Your ability to switch religions is actually a tremendous social lubricant. Because you don't always know if you're born gay. And if you discover it later, in America, not a problem, got a religion. Elvis Reed, not a problem, got a religion. Most of the rest of the world doesn't have that capacity for adaptation. Identity closely associated with religion. And all those religions built during a Malthusian age. So based on sustenance, not abundance. My argument in a nutshell, America is the world's first and most successful multinational union. We invent our single currency, 1862. Thank you, Lincoln. For globalization in miniature. So much of what we've done for the last quarter of a millennia has tremendous application. Because all the problems we describe for the world today, we've done it. We've done them all. All the good, all the bad, in excess. Nobody's done it like America. FDR decides to make our international liberal trade order the model for the world after the Second World War by 1980. Tremendously successful in the West, tracks the emulation of this guy. You get a global economy in the 1980s, China's emergence. We talked globalization in the 1990s. Now that's all we talk about, and the bottom billion. My point is, none of this was by accident. We purposely set about to create this world. Now we're pissed off that everybody hasn't turned into a democracy as quickly as we did. I like to point out in the United States, we didn't have two competitive going at it until about 1840, 66 years after the revolution. 64. So the assumption that a lot of these countries can make the transition to what we would recognize as a multi-party state within the next election cycle, ours, of course, a little ambitious. Now many people actually voted for George Washington, 1789, 1.7% of the population. And it was a landslide. Imagine the Carter Center signing off on that one today. Some sense of perspective. The central rendering of the map I just showed you. We got a high trust environment, the advanced west. We talk security, non-zero sum, not so much defense anymore. Zero sum. Skyrocketing connectivity with a lot of frontiers, the Wild East, still defense oriented. No surprise, that's where the majority of your crazy spam comes from. Their skyrocketing connectivity by extension, mostly driven by resource requirements, to the low trust environment. In the past, our thin connectivity there was simple. We gave them cash, they gave us energy, we didn't ask how they did things. Sort of like the American South pre-Civil War, you give us money, we give you cotton, don't ask how we do things here. So here's my old core, here's my new core, and there's my gap. Now some people look at this and they say, I've seen this before, this is the late 19th century imperial war model, we're looking at colonialization. Point to China and its activities around the world, except China doesn't have any military bases, and isn't interested in running anything other than making the materials move. I say, right time frame, wrong perspective. Look to the American settling of the West post Civil War. You will find the same bad actors, you will find the same responses, you will find the same frustratingly long immigrant process. Although it seemed like an historical blink of an eye about 25 years, given our perspective, our attention span today. Like forever. So the example I like America around 1865. Here we are as a country. Civil War just ended. The assumption is North and badass South. In truth, more complex than that. Lincoln's whole vision post Civil War was not North punish South. It was East integrate West, create a new center of gravity, a new ideology based on the middle class. Congress, 1862, front loads the process. Fernando's squatters' rights, Homestead Act, gives away 10% of land. 
land grant colleges, Railroad Pacific Act creates the dollar, creates income tax. He does nation building in a vast chunk one afternoon in Congress. Why? It's just the Republicans. We have been a middle class ideology ever since. Same process holds for globalization now. That's why this is so important. It's not a matter of West teaches those idiots in the East how to do capitalism. They learn really rather quickly. Instead, it's West and East integrating South, creating first time middle class. If you're willing to go down to $10 per capita per day, that is 60% of the world's population. We have never had a global middle class. Never. So that's the prize. Another way to look at this, really think about it when you look at the map of Africa. It's the argument from uh, Bill Easterly. Squigglier the lines of your country, more stable it is. Straighter the lines of your country, less stable it is. <coughs> if it's squiggly, mountains, rivers, somebody fought a war and ate squiggly. If it's straight, some stranger probably drew the line with a ruler in his capital. So here's the original 13 colonies, fairly distinct. Kids can make them out without the flag or the name. Here's how we do the Trans Appalachian West. Mississippi, Ohio, basically decides everything. Now look at how quickly, when we're in a hurry, we do the America West. My kids say that dates me. <laughs> Couldn't find a halo guy who could do that, though. Let me show you all the thought that went into Colorado. I call it Colorado. Doesn't exactly correspond to the indigenous populations, the insurgencies, the illicit networks that spread all across this package. It was, let's get it done fast. We're living with that same legacy in terms of the European colonial model that existed across the 19th century into the 20th. And my point is, the trick, you've got a high trust environment over here. And we're the China of our age. We're exporting beer to Germany, crying out loud. Andrew Carnegie bragged that we had enough reserves to buy the entire British Empire. Nonsense. But you hear the same arguments about China now. How could we integrate this low trust set over here? And why did we go? There was gold in them, their hills. So 1876, we're three years into the Brooklyn Bridge, greatest engineering feat of the age. Two weeks earlier, Custer buys it a little bighorn in our federally administered tribal area. So dangerous, we couldn't send our military there. So we're not only China of the time period, we're Pakistan of the time period. So we've done it all. So when you're in a frontier integrating age, don't be surprised you find familiar characters, guys who do counterinsurgency. Most popular, um, virtual staff ride at Leavenworth right now. Convoy operations, Sioux and Indian Wars. Why? My nephew did 70,000 miles in a year in Iraq. He'll tell you it's very accurate. So swap out crazy horse, swap in Zarqawi. You got all sorts of criminals, bad actors, further players. You got all sorts of networks coming about, sweetheart deals for extractive industries, infrastructure going up, sweetheart deals for transportation. Swap out Pinkerton, swap in Blackwater. All sorts of nation building, squatters' rights, issues for women, all sorts of nations within nations. Here's all the Swat Valley deals that we cut throughout our history. Over 550 independent nations inside the United States. You may have gambled at one recently. It's all very familiar stuff, including the millennialist kind of religion that comes out of it. And nation building on a vast scale. And corruption. And abuse of children. And robber bearing capitalism and organized racism. So there's nothing you can point to me today that we didn't do in this time frame. All familiar stuff. Environmentalism. Starting to find how we're going to deal with this problem set. I'd like to point out our 
undeclared, undisputed partner in this process is the greatest network integrator of this age. And no, it's not the Brits. Think of globalization as a series of successful replications. You've got the European construct. It successfully replicates in North America. It tries colonialization elsewhere, screws the food royally. The only place it really worked here, Greenfield operation, here also Greenfield operation, you could overwhelm the immigrants, the indigenous population. But the most successful offspring of the Brits, why? We snapped it off really quick. These guys self-destruct in a massive civil war, 1914, 1945. Their version of colonialism based on mass theft. Okay? So big surprise, criminals fight amongst each other. Lenin had it right, so did FDR. After the Second World War, we become the integrator of note. War is attached to this process, defeated Japan, Korea, the bridge too far, Vietnam, largely a distraction. We encourage the export-driven growth, implicit deal, take your surplus, put it into our debt markets, allow our currency to remain cheap, fund our ability to make this integration process happen so we can uh, feel the world's biggest military dominate this region as it occurs. See this in terms of the major product that defines the 20th century, automobile, French word, German invention, associated with America, then it becomes associated with Asia now. Why is that? Not a lot of mystery. Europe's got 600 cars per 1,000 people. We've got 815. These guys got 25. So when you talk about who's going to integrate the gap on all those illicit networks, there's no question the leadership here is going to come from the Asians, not from us. And that disturbs us. And we imagine in their having more control that it is complete chaos, which of course is nonsense. I'd like to point out they got a car for that too. It's called the Nano. It costs about $2,000. No power steering, no radio, no air conditioning. It sucks. I'd like to emphasize the first recalls were completely voluntary. <laughs> If you ever travel to the third world, see a couple, their three kids, the dog and the chicken on a motorcycle, this thing is a steal. So by our standards, chaotic, crazy, wild, by their standards, fabulous. Look at it from a historical perspective. And again, these are the drivers. FBI from China, India, Arab sovereign wealth funds. That's what's making this thing move. We are only tangentially involved. And we find integration led by others to be highly suspicious. Dangerous, threatening, necessarily zero sum. The Africans have different opinions. I believe our choice with the Chinese, not unlike the Brits, with us. They can see their economic empire setting. They attach themselves to the rising star in the West, allows them to punch above their weight the entire 20th century. Their choice was to go with the great integrator of the age against the great revisionist power. Understandably, China can go either way. But in terms of structure, in terms of how this works out, it's pretty hard to argue against us coming together with the Chinese. Because if we want this integration of all these gap areas to go well, it's going to be awful hard to do it in opposition to them. Right now, we're the Leviathan that runs around the planet kicking ass, taking names, scaring people with a gunfire. We think it's more humane if we use drones. Other people still find that offensive. Go figure. These guys are the ultimate networkers over here. The Chinese have a simple model. They come to your country. They say, is that your stuff? You say, yeah. They say, really? Is that your port? You say, yeah. They say, really? Can I build a railroad from your stuff to your port? Here's my down payment, all in cash. I don't care about your human rights. I don't care about your government. I don't care about corruption. I kind of like it, actually. I don't care. Let me be clear. I just don't care. I want stuff, port, China. Very prosaic, actually works. Because the Americans come in and say, I'd like to talk to you about losing your job. It's called democracy. No question, a lot of this is going on in Africa right now. And I would argue that limited liability partnership is already here. We do shock and awe. Guess who has contracts north and south in Iraq for oil? Sign up at CNOOC, CNPC. Three big state-run enterprises, oil industry, come out of China. 